Hello everybody and welcome to our world record attempt for the most board games reviewed in just 10 minutes. Team shut up and sit down, are you ready? Ready! ready. And you're not going to get distracted this time, Quinns? Hi, yeah, uh, no. Start the clock. Okay, first up, we've got Regular Trucker. They made it more normal this time. Six out of ten. Over to you, Ava. Chess by Rainer Knizia is a really boring game that because it's all perfect information, I always know that it's my fault that everything's gone wrong and I don't like it because of that. It's rubbish and these pieces don't even taste good. I've got Longshot the Dice Game, which is based on a 2003 board game called Longshot, which it might have something to do with the 1962 game called Longshot. Also, that might have something to do with the 2003 Japanese game called Longshot. Board Game Geek is not specific. Wins! Uh, yeah, you uh, you roll dice and bet on horses, and it's fun. Okay, great. So, uh, next up, we've got a copy you know, of... I, uh... I used to have a problem gambling with the ponies. Quinn's, don't do a flashback. Yeah, there was hardly a payday where I wouldn't go to the racetrack to watch those horses vibrate up and down, the pegs up their bum, juddering to the latest pop track. That doesn't sound right at all. I can see myself now. My nipples rock hard with excitement. The stench of adrenal sweat and economical body spray, and the even greater stench of raking in the coins. Each one a sticky little medal telling me I'd gotten first place in beating the system. Just like those plastic ponies, I was competing in a race. The human race. And I was the winner. Oh yes, I was a real hellraiser in those days. But not anymore. No. Today, this is more my speed. Oh my god, you're so slow. Longshot the Dice Game is actually so good that I think it gets the shut up and sit down recommend seal. And I can't wait to tell you a little bit more about why. Quinn, well, record attempt. Oh, this is what happened last time. Longshot the Dice Game starts with you slapping down a dinky little racetrack, lining up eight fab wooden horses, you lay out some cards and dice. Then every player gets their own dry erase sheet and a pen and a card that gives each of you a slightly different setup, including a couple of free bets. And the winning player of Longshot is whichever of you made the most money during this one race. Let me show you how it works. Each round of Longshot starts with someone rolling these dice. Look how nice this die is! And you move this horse this many spaces. And you also then check that horse's card, because each horse, when you roll its number and move it, tugs along some other horses as well. And this is how Longshot calculates the odds for different horses. For example, horses 1 and 2 don't offer you as much money as other horses if they win, because the numbers 1 and 2 appear on a lot of these cards. By contrast, horses 7 and 8 appear on no cards, meaning they offer a huge payday if they win, but are most likely to spend the game waddling down the track like they just had a long lunch at an Italian restaurant and honestly, they thought the race was next week. And after each time you've rolled the dice and moved the corresponding horse that number of spaces, the players then leap into action, using the number that you rolled on the horse dice to take an action on their sheet right then in the middle of the race, such as placing a bet hurriedly collecting loyalty rewards at the concession stand, or buying a horse. Yeah, you're Steven? Yeah, you wanna buy your horse? Yeah, now, yes now, what's your friend more name? Let's look at those actions you can take in a bit more detail. The simplest action is to spend your turn betting one, two, or three dollars on the horse that was rolled this round, or add to an existing bet on that horse. Small detail I love here. This is where you write your money, so it is possible to place a bet with a $13 bill and receive an $11 bill in change, which makes the racetrack you're in seem delightfully criminal. Alternatively, if no one has done it yet, you can use the number rolled that round to buy that horse, which is kind of like placing a big bet that then nobody else can make. But also, doing this then gets you access to that horse's special power which fits with my childlike understanding of horses, which is that all horses have a magic power they will share with you if you love them enough. Alternatively, if you don't want to spend any money on your turn, because of course in this game money is points, you can use the number rolled that round to mark a helmet or a jersey on that horse. 
Getting a helmet will later let you ignore the rule that you can't place a bet on that horse after it's crossed the no bet line on the racetrack, while jerseys let you mark an extra notch on that horse's card so that it drags another horse forward when its number comes up again, and each pair of helmet and jersey gets you $5 at the end of the game. You might have some questions here, like, why do we get $5? Are we buying helmets for ourselves? Why do the helmets let us cheat? Are we throwing these clothes onto the duper horses? I don't know! Alright, there's no school that tells you how to be a board game reviewer. Alright? So, no, I, I don't know the answers to you. <sighs> The last action you can choose to take on your turn is to visit the concession stand, which is apparently free, and for each row and column that you fill, you can have any of these prizes, which include getting a free horse! Which seems to me like an irresponsible prize to hand out for someone ordering a burger, but this loyalty scheme actually gets more alarming. By far the most important prizes here are the ones that let you push horses forwards or Pull them backwards! And actually, these four little prizes that let players move horses are transformative to the entire game. But we'll get to that in the part of this video that I like to call the part that is called The Review. Longshot's just a blast. At the absolute simplest level, this game is a timely reminder why the history of board games is millennia after millennia of people racing tiny little components towards a finish line. The ways in which Longshot is balanced and structured simply means that picking up the dice and rolling them and <gasps> seeing that your horse is the one that gets moved towards the finish line, it is just im embarrassingly exciting. It defies all logic and almost all dignity. You roll the dice, the horses nudge forward, everyone notches a thing. Then the next player rolls the dice, the horses nudge forward, everyone notches a thing. Then the next player rolls the dice and the horses nudge forward and everyone notches a thing. Do people who bet on horses commonly have moustaches? I don't know. I'm not sure. It felt right to me. On another slightly more complex level, Longshot simply asks the laudable question of what if a horse betting slip could contain more gambling nested within it? With players having not just the simple options of betting big on one horse or spread betting, but having the option to tweak the very odds of those horses by buying jerseys, or preparing for the future using helmets and getting concession rewards. Longshot makes this puzzle more rich and engaging by giving you three different resources that is equally fun to manage dutifully or carelessly. You've got limited time, limited money, and three tempting one-shot powers. On three turns of the game, you can mark one of these horseshoes and ignore the number rolled on the dice and treat it instead as any number. So you can mark anything you want on your sheet. The possibilities are, uh, if not endless, then there's like eight, eight of them. But what turns Longshot from just a light bit of fun into a game that that one friend you have will sit back and go, Whoa, well that's quite clever actually, are these concession powers that let you move horses forwards or backwards. Now these are great for a couple of obvious reasons. It is clearly very, very funny to take that horse that your friend has bet an indescribably stupid amount of money on and just drag it away from the finish line or to use these powers to take that horse that you bought that's at the back of the pack and shunt it forward as if you were trying to push start a car. No. These concession powers are great because they pipe a layer of groupthink on top of the game as if the designers were icing a cake. Here's the thing. If a player bets big on a horse, it becomes less likely to win because other players will probably push it backwards. But if two players become invested in the same horse, it might then become more likely to win because they can work together to propel it forward. In other words, Longshot is a betting game with the very real printed odds of how fast each horse is, but the equally real and also totally nebulous odds of how likely any of your friends are on a financial or emotional level to spend their turn pushing these horses forward or pulling them backwards. And in fact, there's a fascinating tipping point in this game. Let's imagine you're playing with five players, and by the way, that's another feather in this game's cap. It plays from one to eight players and is not awful at any of those player counts. If you're in a five player game and like four players have bet on the same horse, it actually becomes less likely to win because none of those four players want to be the one to spend their turn and their precious concession bonus pushing that horse forward. 
All of which is to say that Long Shot the Dice Game very much is the dumb fun time horse betting game that it looks like, but slipped into this box like a cardboard inlay is a very subtle mini game about cults. And as I say this, I now realize that you could retheme this game effortlessly to be about the cryptocurrency marketplace. And that is a chilling thought that I have now stuck you with. Just to get serious for a second, I probably shouldn't have used permanent marker. Uh, I have thought about whether Longshot's theme glamorizes an industry that's definitely bad for horses and possibly equally bad for humans, but ultimately this game is far too stupid, I think, to be making any kind of a statement at all. Also, the horses in this game are made of wood, therefore it is philosophically unlikely that they're able to feel pain, but just to be sure, we conducted an experiment. Are you okay? The results were sadly inconclusive. So that's Longshot the Dice Game, a superbly silly game that anyone can play that is affordably priced in a lovely little magnetic box, but is at the same time far smarter than it had to be. I love this game, it's going straight in my collection because I don't own anything quite like it. I definitely don't own enough stupid gambling board games. The uh, only other excellent gambling board game I have in my collection is Ra, I think, which people will tell you is a really, really intelligent game for intelligent people. It's not. It's not. It's a very stupid gambling game. Um, alternatively, if you're not into Ra, or you already own it, or you don't want long shot, if you just want more fun with dry erase boards, I'd recommend two absolute best-in-class games. There's the terrific Railroad Inc which we've done a video review of, and Tom inexplicably covered every single expansion they've ever made for it in another video. That video by Tom is absolutely demented. Uh, what a boy. Alternatively, I would recommend the other dry erase game, Welcome to the Moon, which we talked about in podcast 169. That is a terrific sequel to the uh, award-winning game, Welcome to. Both Railroad Inc. and Welcome to the Moon are, I think, better puzzles than Longshot the Dice Game, but this is the only one of those games that sees you actually playing together with your friends and all your plans flopping over one another in the middle of the table like snakes in a bucket, and the bucket is labelled capitalism. Ooh, 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 God. Hello, yeah, sorry, uh, I'm done now. I think it's Ava up next? Quinns, yeah, we're out of time. Uh, so for our world record attempt, we managed three board game reviews in 10 minutes. Well, what's the results, Matt? Did we break the world record? We did it, gang. We're in the world record book. Yes! Come on! Ava, 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 Ava. Wow, I'm stunned. Oh. Hey, well done, everybody. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of surprised we did it with Tom and Ava slowing me down, but still, absolutely huge achievement. Oh, huge. Hello? Is this thing on?